All right, guys, after a couple of weeks in the Caribbean, we are back in our home of St. Pete to show you what's new in the summer of 2022. We'll see you at our first spot. Like many of the episodes in our What's New series, our first stop of the day involves our favorite early morning activity, coffee. But at the intersection of 21st Street and Central Avenue, you won't find your typical St. Pete coffee shop, as 2D Cafe offers a totally unique experience. And we'll show you what we mean right now. Open since early April, 2D Cafe brings Florida's first two-dimensional cafe experience to the Grand Central District of St. Pete. Here, customers will find themselves immersed in a comic book-like world with black and white decorations and furniture which appears to be hand-drawn. While it may be typical for St. Pete establishments to offer unique atmospheres and art, at 2D Cafe, you can actually be part of the art. In addition to the unique visual experience, 2D customers will find a menu full of European cafe staples such as croissants, muffins, coffees, plus cuisine honoring the owner's home country of Uruguay. Our order included an empanada, iced latte, caramel filled cruffin, and a hot latte. We were pleased to find both of our food items to appear to be extremely fresh and the lattes to be strong and smooth. Skylar was first to try the cheese and truffle empanada, which we both found to be quite good. But there's no question that the item I was most excited for was the caramel-filled cruffin. While my expectations were high, the sweet, soft, and flaky cruffin did not disappoint. And even Skylar had to agree that it was the highlight of our experience at the 2D Cafe. All right, Skylar, what did you think of that place? Uh, the atmosphere was really cool. The coffee was good. The food was really good. The service was a little bit slow, but they are still pretty new and it was really busy in there. So I'll give them a pass on that one. And in my opinion, the food was totally worth the wait. That empanada was really good, but my favorite had to be that croissant donut thing with the caramel in the middle. It was amazing. So it's safe to say we'll be going back. I think so. After a great start to the day at the 2D Cafe, it was time to hit our second stop of the day. And for that, we wouldn't have to go far, as our lunch spot was just half a mile west down Central Avenue. Here you'll find St. Pete's newest spot for Indian food, the Twisted Indian. Opened in May of 2022, the 2639 Central Avenue location is the Twisted Indian's first brick and mortar restaurant but Twisted Indian is far from new to the St. Pete food scene, having operated the Twisted Indian food truck since 2016. And while we had enjoyed a few meals from the food truck, we were excited to see what their first restaurant had to offer. We enjoyed the bold and bright Indian-themed decor as we awaited our orders, and in less than 10 minutes, they were ready. But as you can probably tell, Twisted Indian does not serve your typical Indian food as Skylar's lamb korma dish came wrapped in naan bread and my paneer tikka masala arrived on a bed of fries, which was a bit unusual, but delicious. And Skylar couldn't resist sampling some Indian hot sauces on his naan witch. While the green sauce was pretty good, the orange sauce was the winner. And while it was delicious, we do have to warn you, it was also quite spicy. So we just left the Twisted Indian, and as some of you may know, we love Indian food. So we are really happy to finally have an Indian spot close to downtown St. Pete. And as the name suggests, it is a twist on Indian food. So it has delicious non-traditional options like the yogi fries that I tried today. And for those of you who are looking for vegetarian and vegan options, this is gonna be a new restaurant for you to check out. Now we're gonna go try to burn off some of those calories before we head to our next spot. You have entered the fitness zone. Are you feeling the burn, Jamie? I'm not sure where I'm supposed to feel it. <laughs>
What are you doing, Jamie? Just sitting in the shade because <laughs> I'm not ready to get in the sun again. While hitting the fitness zone on this day was a pretty regrettable decision, our next stop of the day surely wouldn't be, as it has guitars, cold drinks, and air conditioning. Located within the St. Pete Warehouse Arts District, local guitarists are likely well aware of 7C music. But we had just recently heard of 7C and were intrigued by the rumored combination of guitars, craft beers, and coffee. We found the shop to be bright, clean, and spacious, with a variety of acoustic guitars and ukuleles for purchase. But I was most impressed with the beautiful selection of electric guitars, and while I don't know how to play, I was thinking it might be time to learn. One thing that surprised us about 7C was the stage located near the center of the shop where patrons can enjoy weekly live music events. After taking a tour of the shop, it was time to cool down with some cold beverages. And while we weren't surprised to find a variety of coffee, wine, and beers, I was surprised to find that 7C also serves kombucha. Both drinks were ice cold and refreshing, and exactly what we needed on a hot summer day in St. Pete. So we just left 7C Music and Coffee, and that place was even cooler than we expected it to be. Yeah, but we gotta be honest, the place actually isn't that new. We found out when we were there that it opened up way back in 2020, but since it's so cool and we didn't know about it, we figure there's a good chance you didn't know about it either, and that's why we're still including it in this episode. But now that we know about it, we're gonna keep an eye out on their events calendar so we can hopefully watch some live music there in the future. If you're enjoying this video so far and wanna see more things to do in and around St. Pete, the Gulf beaches and beyond, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn the notifications on. So I gotta admit, this is the least excited we've been about doing a What's New in St. Pete video for quite a while. And it's not because we don't have a lot of cool places to show you, because we do because we're melting. <laughs> yeah, it is July in St. Pete right now, so it's like 95 degrees and humid, and we are sweaty and exhausted, so we're gonna have to pick this back up tomorrow. We'll see you in the morning. It is Sunday morning and we are back. Unfortunately, it is just as hot and humid as it was yesterday, but at least we are rested and ready to check out some new businesses. We're actually at our first planned stop of the day, which is Cafe Clementine here at the Museum of Fine Arts downtown. But of course, we are here during the one weekend where they're actually closed. But that's okay because we have a backup plan. And here we are at the new St. Pete location for La Segunda Bakery. Now it wasn't originally on our plans because it is a little north of downtown, but we've heard really great things about the Tampa locations and we're excited to give it a try. We'll see you inside. Located at 2424 4th Street North, the St. Pete location of La Segunda Bakery is the third in the Tampa Bay area. We couldn't pass on a fresh loaf of La Segunda's famous Cuban bread, just one of over 20,000 loaves they bake daily. But what we were most excited about on this stop were the fresh Cuban pastries, and we sure had plenty to choose from. In addition to fresh bread and pastries, we found that La Segunda also offers a variety of sandwiches, salads, and another of our favorites, Café con Leche. And while Skylar found his to be a bit on the sweet side, I found the sweetness to be absolutely perfect. Next up were the guava and cream cheese and blueberry cream cheese stuffed pastries, which we had both been anxiously awaiting. With all the great reviews we'd read about La Segunda's baked goods, we were a bit concerned of a letdown, but these pastries easily lived up to their reputation as both were soft, sweet, and nothing short of amazing. So while we were a little bummed that Cafe Clementine was closed, we're so glad we ended up at La Segunda because that place was awesome. Now we're gonna head back downtown to grab brunch, but we have one stop along the way. 
If you're still enjoying this video and want to help our channel grow, then make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you have a favorite spot from this video or know of any great new spots that we haven't included in our series, let us know in the comments. So we had to take a minute to give you an update on a project that we're super excited about, the Sunrunner. In just a month or two, we're going to be able to ride a bus from our home in downtown St. Pete out to St. Pete Beach both quickly and inexpensively. As of now, the project's supposed to be completed sometime in September, and we do plan on showing you the Sunrunner experience in a future episode, so keep an eye out for that one. Our second meal of the day took us back to downtown St. Pete on Central Avenue, where we couldn't wait to visit a brand new pizza and wine bar that had opened just a week or so prior. We found the interior of Original Flavor 1889 to be spacious with a contemporary Italian atmosphere, and the authentic Italian feel is no facade, as this establishment is owned and operated by first-generation Italians. It's perfect for such a hot day. After debating pizza or pasta over a cold Peroni, we eventually opted for the pizza. We were especially happy with our seats at the back bar, where we watched our fresh pizza crust being baked in the massive Neapolitan pizza oven. After a few short minutes, our crust was ready, and it was time to add the toppings, which on this pizza included an Italian bologna, ricotta cheese, a pistachio pesto, crumbled pistachios, these things, basil, and extra virgin olive oil. In no time at all, our pizza masterpiece was complete. And while we had never seen a pizza quite like this one before, we sure were excited to try it. As expected, this pizza was unlike any I'd ever tasted, but in a very, very good way. We found the toppings to blend together perfectly and the crust to be extremely light and almost croissant-like. And while neither of us were very hungry to begin this meal, we easily ate the whole pizza and still felt surprisingly good after doing so. So we just left Original Flavor 1889, and that place is brand new. It only opened about a week ago. Now I had done some research online before we went, and I saw that they advertised a pistachio pizza, which I thought sounded really interesting. Yeah, and I was not feeling it. <laughs> no, I could not convince Skylar to try it before we got there, but the staff actually recommended it, so we ended up ordering it, and I think we're both happy that we did because it was unlike any other pizza so we've ever tried and the flavors really blended well together and if you're in the mood for trying something new we would recommend it with an amazing breakfast and lunch in the books we still had one meal left on this day and that led us west down central avenue to the edge district where you'll find the brand new edge eatery and district lounge Located on the ground floor of the Fusion 1560 apartment building, the Edge Eatery brings a new contemporary casual food hall experience to the St. Pete restaurant scene. And while Colombian, Cuban, and Italian food is certainly nothing new to St. Pete, the ability to get them all in one spot is. Having just eaten pizza for lunch, we decided to skip the Italian and opted for a sampling of Colombian and Cuban fare instead. Perhaps most impressive were the drinks, as the pina colada was the best we've had in St. Pete. As for the food, my favorite was the fried cassava, while Skylar's was the Colombian meat pie. Located just off of the main cafeteria area, guests will find the District Lounge, an intimate listening lounge and craft cocktail bar. Here you'll be able to sip on a specialty cocktail, beer, or wine while the guest DJ spins records from behind the bar. And while the District Lounge had not yet opened to the public during our visit, we can confirm that they are now open for business and are worth checking out. So we just left the Edge Eatery and District Lounge, which actually is another place that was not on our original list of places to visit in this video. Yeah, the place that we were planning on eating at, we arrived at and found out that the hours they had posted on their website were inaccurate and they weren't even open. And we didn't even have a backup this time. Yeah, so we just got on our scooters and started driving down Central Avenue in hopes that we might stumble upon a place to eat that recently opened. 
and it seems like it was meant to be since we found the Edge Eatery. Now during our visit, they were still in their soft opening period, but by the time this video is live, they will have been open for a few weeks now. Yeah, we definitely do recommend checking it out, but if you want to see more establishments in and around downtown St. Pete to visit, make sure to check out this playlist next. Thanks for watching!